To start off, I haven't gotten much sleep over the past few months. My insomnia has gotten really bad, and my doctors act as if I'm medication-seeking whenever I ask for help. Anyway, the house that I'm in currently, I know for a fact, has some kind of beings living in this big hedge in the backyard. They've been seen all around the house, though. I saw one on a snowy day, run from behind my neighbor's parked RV to behind one of those weird trees that looks like a bunch of skinny trees just growing from the same spot. I'm not sure the name of the specific type of tree, but the main point is that you can see through to the other side pretty easily between the little trunks. Anyway, I saw what appeared to be a fat little man, about a foot tall, run from the RV to behind the tree. So, without breaking eye contact with the tree, in case whatever it was ran, I walked over to see if I could find footprints or something, in case maybe it was a rabbit. I got to it, and of course, there were no footprints, nothing in the tree, not even a rabbit or a squirrel. I knew what it was, but I just decided to leave it be, and went back inside. A few months later, my little brother saw the same looking thing run in between two of the same types of trees that I mentioned earlier, just on the other side of my house. All he said was it looked like a tiny roundish man, running, definitely on two legs, and again, no footprints. It was muddy that day, so if it had been an animal, there should have been footprints. It seems to me like they use those specific trees as some kind of portal or entryway to something. So that's the first being that I had questions about. The second has been happening a lot more recently, and is why I mentioned at first that I have insomnia, because that very well could be what the cause of this was. Our minds are fragile things when not being cared for properly after all. Within the last month or so, I have seen this thing in my living room. I sleep in my living room because I have too much anxiety to sleep in the back end of my house. I have babies and if something were to happen, I feel like I wouldn't hear it. Both times I've seen this figure, I've been laying in bed trying to sleep. I'll roll over and look at my brick fireplace and I'll see this tiny little humanoid type thing run for just a split second. But it's not fast. It seems like it's a slow motion echo of a child running. I'm not very good at describing these things, but I will try. It was transparent, but I could make out what seemed like bones. It honestly looked like an x-ray or an ultrasound of a child. It was like a sheer white color, like a ghostly skeleton in a way. It had a disproportionately large head and a tiny body. It couldn't have been more than 10 inches tall. As I mentioned before, it looked like I had just seen a slow motion flash of this thing running. It just kind of dissipated after I saw it. I've seen this thing twice in almost the same spot. The spots are maybe five to 10 inches away from each other. I saw it the first time almost a month ago and then last night as well. I was hesitant to tell this story because I had recently heard from people that talking about seeing dwarves or elves or fae will just piss them off. I don't really know. I just wanted to share the experience and ask if anybody has any idea about what this could be. I'm still thinking fae, but not sure. It doesn't feel bad. It seems more playful or curious, but I know things like this can easily deceive. Any input is appreciated. So, let me know if you have any ideas. I was laying down for a nap. I had my two cats snuggled up with me, and my two dogs were outside. 
All of a sudden, I heard toenails on the hardwood floor, and then sniffing beside the bed. My brain went, okay, one of the dogs is in here. And then I came instantly all the way awake, because my brain went, wait, how did they get in the house? I sat up expecting to see one of the pups sitting beside my bed, but there was nothing. I checked all the rooms, no dogs. The doors were all shut. I looked outside and both dogs were still out there. I have no explanation other than perhaps I was dreaming while I was semi-conscious. Or I had a visit from a church grim or black dog. I specifically say church grim because my house is unique. It was originally built attached to a church in the 70s for the pastor's family. My great grandma bought the house in the 90s from the kids of the original pastor. She attended the church and was extremely devout. So when the pastor passed away, she would go into the church from her house every Sunday and turn the heat on and prepare for service. She lived here until she died. Shortly before she died, the church had a new church built, so the old one became abandoned. My grandma inherited the house and my husband and I bought it from her. So I'm living in my great grandma's old house that's attached to an old abandoned church. The church still owns the original building, so I don't have access unless I ask. But this is why I think that perhaps I got a visit from a church grim. There's this book called Fairies, Real Encounters with Little People by Janet Board, and in it she discusses stories, both old and modern, of encounters with fairies and gnomes and things like that. There was this one that was written by a doctor in the late 1700s. He recounted a time when he was just a boy. He and several friends spotted gnomes dancing in a field. They were all holding handkerchiefs between them, like Moorish dancers. He said that when these gnomes spotted them, one of the gnomes chased after them, and even grabbed this doctor as he slipped through a fence. The boy pulled free, and said that the gnome, which he described as having a swarthy face, reached after him, but was unable to grab him a second time. They ran to their parents, who immediately went out looking for these gnomes, but they had disappeared. According to the book, Gnomes and other interdimensional beings were fond of kidnapping children, who would then act as servants in their world. Another story was actually printed in the Anchorage Daily News. A snowmobiler had spotted a young boy in a snow-covered field, all alone, and with no footprints anywhere. The boy just seemed to have appeared there. The boy said that he was taken into a local hill, one that local Eskimos had said was haunted. The boy said he found himself in a city and met a girl who had been kidnapped and brought there 40 years earlier. She asked the boy for help. The boy said that the Inserat, something like that, think it was the name the Eskimos gave these beings, had let him go for whatever reason. I find these stories really interesting, and I'm just curious if anyone else has experiences like these. For reference, I live in Sweden. My family is very anti-religious, tends to always look to science and logic, and the house that we live in is fairly old, dating back around a hundred years. My dad is a very productive person and is always getting new hobbies on the fly. One day he decided to start a bee farm in our backyard. When you take care of bees, you need a room that is very clean to keep out the bacteria from the honey. He decided to use our shed in the backyard, which is extremely small. The room can fit about two people. In the room, we have one desk, which has a couple of drawers in it. In those drawers, we keep all of the necessary equipment whenever we make the jars of honey. 
My dad had put labels on each jar of honey, which is a very tedious process. The labels are on a huge scroll, about the size of an average adult's small arm in diameter. My dad and I were putting labels on the jars for about 30 minutes, before he went outside for about 10 seconds just to grab some air. I could see him this entire time. When he goes out, he puts the scroll on the top of the desk. During this time that I was watching, I took out my phone. When he came back in, we proceeded to begin again. But from out of nowhere, he asked me what I'd done with the scroll. I told him that he put the scroll on the top of the desk, but it wasn't there. Without the scroll of labels, we couldn't continue working. We start to look all over the room, but nothing. As I described earlier, the room was pretty tiny, which is why it was so odd for it to just disappear. We searched everywhere, behind the desk, in each drawer, outside, but still, nothing. This happened about a year ago, and it still freaks me out. Usually, whenever my family and I experience something paranormal, we blame it on something logical and ignore it. But this incident cannot be explained, and it still leaves a creepy feel. There is seriously nowhere for it to have disappeared to, and that's what still really freaks me out. Even in the highly unlikely event of it rolling outside, my dad and I would have easily spotted it or heard it. Moral of the story, maybe gnomes still exist in Sweden. I was really young. I can't remember how young, but I must have been under six. I was at my grandparents, and they have an outside sauna in a building with a workshop next to it. I was with my grandpa, and we were talking about something as we entered the sauna. Then my grandpa goes to the heater to put logs in, or maybe to store them next to it. I can't really remember which. But I was facing the benches as we were talking. The next thing I know, there's a little gnome that peeked its head over and looked straight at me from a hole, where all the water goes onto the floor. It must have been only a second, because I stood still and silent, and then it just went away. I told my grandpa, but I don't know if he took it seriously. I didn't know how to feel. I was fascinated, but a little creeped out by it. Later, my grandpa told me something about gnomes living underground, as it is often in Finnish folklore, which made it even more mysterious to me. I know it wasn't a dream, because it shocked me and I remember it so clearly, and I was wide awake. I didn't know where to tell this story, I just thought it would be interesting to tell. One evening, a group of friends and I were hanging out in the city. First, we went to a local restaurant, and then we went to a liquor store to buy alcohol. As we each threw in suggestions on where to hang out, one of my friends mentioned Stowe Lake, which is a small lake in San Francisco. As we get a couple swigs of liquor in us, we start walking down a trail at about 11.45 at night. First. We stopped at a creepy gazebo in the middle of the forest, and then we began to head toward the lake. I began to power walk and try to scare my friends down the path. I see a huge tree up ahead. As I was turning, right behind the tree, I noticed a small figure start to waddle away from me. I noticed a dark blue pointy hat, a red coat, and this figure was extremely short. This sucker started running and panting into a hole in the tree. It looked a little bit like a doorway. I didn't really want to stick around. I played it cool as if nothing had happened and returned to my group. And of course, I never mentioned it to anyone. But I'm pretty sure I saw a gnome at Stowe Lake.
When I was seven, I woke up in the middle of the night to steal some biscuits from the kitchen. Our kitchen is right beside our conservatory, which has a big open window that allows you to glance out into the garden. While eating, I heard some chatter from outside. Curious, I went to go peer outside the window. I saw three little men in red pointy hats outside in my garden, bickering amongst themselves in a strange language I've never heard of before or after. I was so stricken with terror that I didn't speak. I ran to my parents' bedroom to tell them about the intruders. My dad was reluctant to believe me, but he could see that I was obviously shaken up by something and came downstairs to investigate. They must have heard us coming, because by the time we'd gotten to the conservatory, they'd already pegged it and were running through the back gate. My dad got a glimpse of them too, but he only saw their red pointy hats. I've never seen him look so scared before, or in such complete disbelief. I'm still completely baffled by the whole thing. I believe that I have seen gnomes on more than one account. It's been well over a year since I last saw a gnome. I have epilepsy, so I'm never entirely sure if it's just my brain fabricating things, but I have also never hallucinated due to seizures that I know of. That all being said, I once went to a psychic who did Akashic record readings. She told me that I was closely connected to earth spirits. I made no mention to her about seeing gnomes because, well, that makes you sound absolutely bonkers. For a short period of time, my ex and I lived in his belated grandfather's house. The property was teeming with Japanese maples and native plants. He also kept an orchid room. One day, while taking a shower, I heard the bathroom door move and I saw a drably dressed little old man about a foot and a half tall run through the bathroom and climb out the open window. It scared the absolute crap out of me. I let out a yelp. My ex came running in, and so as not to be taken for even more medical testing than I've already been through, when he asked me what happened, I told him that I had just slipped. Another thing I once saw might have been a troll, but I'm unsure. I have no idea what it was. Maybe one of you could enlighten me. I'd been doing a lot of meditating, about three hours or so, and I headed into my bedroom to change for the gym. I opened my closet, and there was a three and a half to four foot naked, wrinkly, elf troll type thing. I gasped and backed up, and it disappeared. Since both sightings mentioned here, I have had more than one CT scan, MRIs, etc. My seizures were a result of head trauma that happened well after what I'll refer to as the troll incident. There are other times that I've seen them, as well as one childhood encounter with my belated Noni, and a few encounters with my grandfather who died when I was four. Again, my brain has been scanned a lot in multiple ways, and nothing abnormal has ever been found, other than some white spots from chronic migraine, and those popped up super recently. I have even been evaluated by a neuropsychologist. No one has ever diagnosed me with anything other than seizures related to the head trauma, but like I said, that happened after I started seeing these things. I'm not really sure what it is I'm seeing, I just thought it was interesting. This story is pretty short, and I have no idea why it happened. But it was pretty late at night, and I wanted to go to sleep. Just right about when I put my head on the pillow and closed my eyes, I immediately had a vision of a gnome, a really short one. In this vision, he stood behind the transparent curtain that was in front of me, 
since the big window is right at the foot of where I lay. I could clearly see most of his features since the curtain was transparent. He had a huge smile, and he had closed but smiling eyes, bald head, and no beard. His clothes appeared ragged and to be brown and gray in coloring. Right after I had that vision, which didn't seem like my imagination at all, I sat up and I felt really scared. I didn't feel comfortable sleeping near the window. I just couldn't sleep, even though the gnome wasn't there when I opened my eyes. So I went and slept near my sister. Like I said, I don't really know how to explain it, but it wasn't my imagination. It wasn't like when you have a random thought or image in your head that you can easily dismiss. This was like I was watching something happen through my eyes that were closed. Anyway, I would just like to know if anyone else has experienced anything like this related to gnomes. I was hunting in a fairly large forest somewhere in the northeast corridor of the United States. It's not uncommon to run into other people at the edges of the woods. It's fairly uncommon to run into people in the middle of the woods, even during hunting season, unless you're on the trails, which I wasn't. And it's decently common to run into the ruins of buildings from the 1800s. I happened to be hunting a new valley, and I was pretty sure it had a crossing into it to set the view. So I'm sitting on top of a very steep shale slide, looking down into a valley with a creek running through it. Approaching this plateau, there's a knife edge that runs up and down the ridge. But there's really no way to get up to this spot, except for the seriously determined, the drunk, and the foolish, without walking up or down the edge. Getting up here creates quite a noise from the stones sliding on the other stones, which means I know I need to sit up here for an hour to let things settle back down after I make my ascent. It's such a pain in the butt. I left my day pack at the bottom under a pine tree and only had a rifle, binoculars, water, and an energy bar. I'm up here for about three hours, glassing this little tiny stream, looking for something to cross it, and seeing nothing but squirrels and birds, I finally decide to start looking at the opposite hill out of sheer boredom. I'm 90% sure I chose a poor spot and wasted an afternoon looking at nothing, such as hunting. It's got really interesting days, and it's got really boring days, and this is why it's called hunting and not shooting. As I'm screwing around with the focus on the binoculars, I catch a glimpse of something which almost looks like a person if they were wearing dark blue clothes and about four feet tall. 99% of the time, day hikers just pass by without realizing I'm even here, even with the blaze orange requirements, or they pretend to ignore me. You'd be amazed how many times someone has almost walked through my stand. Anyway. This person wasn't moving, which started to make me think that I was wrong about it being a person. It was just standing there, behind the cover of some low scrub brush and tree branches, and I would have missed it had it not been for its color. I zoom out a bit and realize that I'm not looking at a person, but a collapsed cabin, and I was looking at where the door would be, except it really looked like a person, and Cabins aren't blue. I moved the zoom back onto the door and played with the focus for about five minutes, and I just can't get this person to come back into focus. In fact, the cabin door now has some light from the setting sun visible through the holes in the walls and the roof. Whatever four foot tall thing I was looking at has moved. Sigh. Teenagers, right? I have that thought. And then I realize something. I can still hear birds and squirrels and all the other things in the woods which would typically go quiet when they notice something. Which means that they didn't notice me. But that also means they didn't notice whatever was in this cabin door a short time ago. I'm doing my best to stay quiet and not move, and whatever it was certainly did move. 
I would expect everything in the woods to have gone for cover with a teenager crashing through the brush, but the noises almost made it worse. There was stuff moving in the brush. The problem was, stuff was moving around in the brush. I started to think that this was a trick of the light since the sun was setting, and it was getting to the part of the day when tree stumps looked like deer. I knew that I would have to move soon and figured I might as well pack it up since I still had to get down off the shale and back to the pine tree where I had planned to throw a tarp and sleep. At this time, I realized it wasn't dark per se, but it was overcast now. Again, the creepy experience isn't that there's something obviously wrong. It's that everything is so completely normal for what I would expect were I alone. About this time, a fog rolled into the valley which the combination of overcast weather conditions, sunset, and a ground fog coming up in the west low valley had signaled it was time to leave. I checked my safety, put the caps on my glass, and reached up to take down my orange flag. The moment I grabbed the flag, the dread came. That's the only way I can describe it. The woods went from animals going home to sleep to full on, you're screwed. The movement had attracted what I could only describe as a thousand invisible eyes, which all turned in unison as they noticed me. Ever wonder what a deer feels like in the headlights? This is it. Then, I heard children. I heard children laughing. Not teenagers, not adults, not women, but full-on five-year-old kids laughing like they caught a firefly. I had hiked in five miles the previous day through the woods and put down two more today when I woke up to get to this spot, and I distinctively hear children laughing during what I could only describe as the creepiest moment I've ever had in a valley that I know is completely unoccupied having stared at it for the last four hours. I'm pretty sure my feet only touched the shale three times getting down from that knife edge, and I made a ton of noise doing it too, but at this point I didn't really care. I grabbed the pack and my flashlight, and I absolutely full-on rucked it to the next hilltop. I killed my light halfway up the hill, and then went to the top of the hill where I threw down the tarp, unrolled my foam, and sat there all night watching the hill I had just come from. I still have no idea what I experienced. Some people tell me that I had a run-in with the Fae. Either way, it was definitely the most unsettling experience I've ever had. My mom's friend Lucy had a massive house with a garden backing into some woods. At the time of this story, I must have been around 8 or 9, and my two older twin brothers were 11 or 12. I remember them being too old to play with me, and they often left me out of their games. My mom and Lucy were in the kitchen making lunch. I was in the garden sun, playing with a doll innocently, sitting on the floor trying to occupy myself, when something made me look into the tree line of the woods. There stood a small girl. She was around my size and waved me over to her. You can imagine how happy I was upon seeing a new potential playmate. I walked over and she led me through the woods and into a clearing. In the clearing, it looked like some sort of party or celebration was going on. I saw a few girls and boys my height sitting down on some chairs, a makeshift table in the middle, and heard faint music coming from somewhere. This sounds crazy, I know, but it sort of resembled the Mad Hatter's Tea Party from Alice in Wonderland. They all looked pleased to see me and made me sit down. The little girl had a plate with a slice of cake on it and was edging it toward me. I knew that I would get in trouble with my mom for eating before lunch and not waiting, so I shook my head and held onto my doll. The girl frowned and placed the cake back on the table. She asked me a few more times after that to eat it, and each time I declined. It felt like I was there for only a few minutes, and I suddenly became worried that I was going to be in trouble for missing lunch. I told them that I needed to go home, but that I would come see them straight after I've eaten. I made my way back through the woods. 
The sun kept coming through the trees as I ran past them. But stepping out of the woods, I could clearly see that it wasn't sunny anymore, let alone daytime. The sky had turned dark and a feeling of dread and confusion came over me. I walked to the house and through the door, only to be greeted by my mom's high-pitched scream as she ran toward me. She gave me a massive hug and then proceeded to yell at me. I found out that I had been missing for seven hours. Lucy, my brothers, and some neighbors were all out looking for me. I tried my best to explain to my mom that I had been playing with my new friends for a few minutes, but she thought I was lying and wasn't having any of it. It still confuses me to this day. I've seen something that I've come to know as a red cap or a blood cap. It's supposedly a kind of pagan fairy or spirit or demon. When I first saw it, I thought it was a person, and then when I realized something was off about it, I thought it was a ghost. I'll tell you about it first and then explain how I came to know more. I first started seeing it relatively recently, during the summer of 2016. A friend of mine had been renting a house from his parents. It was a partially completed extravagant brick house at the back end of a clearing and field in the woods, with a completed portion being attached to a trailer house. Myself and several other friends of ours accumulated a group totaling about 10 regulars. We were enjoying our summer vacation from university and working, and when we had time off we were all chilling at his place watching movies, smoking, working out, drinking, etc. We'd thrown several huge blowout parties over the spring and early summer months, with over 300 people showing up to them each as well. At one of these parties, a huge brawl had broken out over some drunken disagreement, fueled by the reality that rivaling town's students were at the party, and some rednecks who had shown up from Kellyville had fired off some guns. In the panic after the gunshots, one guy ran over the water line with his vehicle and broke it pretty badly, so we had to bring water jugs and make do as a group until the water got repaired, which took a while because college kids are broke. So we'd have to go outside to the woods to relieve ourselves. While I was out there, I saw it. It would be dressed differently from time to time, but it was always one of two outfits. It would either be dressed in dirty overalls, either with bare feet or with boots, with a dirty shirt underneath, and it would either be bald or wearing a straw hat. Or, it would be in a very old black tuxedo, with a really bad black toupee on. It looked like a white man with a huge nose and large eyes. It would be standing in the field, staring at the house, and if you looked away and then looked back again, it would be standing in a different place in the field, still staring at the house, and standing just a little bit closer to the house as well. Never at you, though. It never felt strange or weird, though. It was like being at someone's house and seeing a person who lives there on the property. It was like it just belonged. And it always showed itself sometime in between sunset and sunrise, during the twilight hours or late at night. I didn't mention seeing it at first. It was actually a girl who hung out with the group that came inside and asked me about the man in the field. At that point I got excited because somebody else had seen it too. I asked if it was wearing what I just described, at which point the friend who owned the house yelled, yes, you've both seen it too? Over the next couple of months, seven more people saw it without any of us telling them about it first. And yes, to be fair, we were usually slightly high on marijuana, or drunk when we would see him, but those don't usually cause hallucinations like that, especially shared ones. They could lower our inhibitions enough to see something paranormal, though. Over these same months, people at the house would say that they felt like they were being watched from corners and doorways, and several things would move around the house when nobody was there like a set of praying hands above the fireplace mantel being found on the kitchen stove with the palms facing away from you. 
Multiple people remembered things that didn't happen, like shelves that are bolted into the wall falling down, and the cabinets in the kitchen would open on their own. There was also a Walmart bag filled with other Walmart bags hanging on a hook that was moved aggressively like somebody had slapped it, when several of us were in the kitchen to see it, but nobody was near enough to touch it. Anyway, when we finally got fed up with what terrible landlords his parents were, he decided to move out, and I said that I would help. Now, keep in mind that this night we were 100% sober. We were gathering his stuff to help get him moved into a different place, and had almost everything gathered except this lotto ticket that he'd won a little bit of money on. Again, college kids, anything helps. So the two of us were up there alone, tearing the house apart looking for this lotto ticket. It had just been on the bar counter, and it had disappeared. During the search, I looked in a nearby room, and as soon as I walked in, I saw it, standing right outside the window, looking into the house. I didn't move. I didn't blink. I didn't take my eyes off of it. After a moment, I called for my friend to come in. I just pointed at the window when he walked in, and he saw it too. We kept our eyes on it while talking over how to react, and decided to just find this ticket and leave, since this being had never been aggressive and we were going to be coming back anyway. We went back into the main area and continued our search, eventually getting tired of looking. I stopped and leaned over the bar while looking at my phone, when I got a really weird feeling coming from the doorway of his parents' old bedroom, across the living room. As I turned, my friend walked into the room, and stopped, and looked into that room simultaneously. We both felt it. Standing in the room, behind the TV and the TV stand, was this thing, a couple of feet taller than it looked before, dressed in that tuxedo and toupee, its large eyes were jet black and looking right at us, and for the first time it didn't feel like it was okay, or that it belonged. It felt aggressive. After a few moments of us staring back at it in silence, my friend ran over and shut the door, and then said we were leaving. I had already turned around to grab a bag, and in the hallway, right behind me on the floor, was the lotto ticket we'd been searching all over the house for. I grabbed it, and on the way out, I looked up at the fireplace mantle, and the praying hands had been turned, with their palms facing out toward us. We haven't been back to that house since. A few months later, we were hanging out at our dealer's house. He's an old-school hippie, and he's deep into pagan beliefs. We were talking about ghost stories over a bowl of weed with him, and another guy who hung out there regularly also practiced the same beliefs. After describing it to them, they looked at each other and both told us that it was a blood cap. They told us that it was a demon of the Fey realm that claims land and then drains the energy off of it. That they get their names from the practice of dyeing the twigs and toupees that they wear with human blood. And that ours was probably a young one if its hair was black. Then the dealer, sensing our skepticism, told us to hold on a minute. He left the room, and then he brought back a book, full of descriptions and artistic renderings of spirits, laos, demons, fairies, and monsters from pagan beliefs. He showed us an artistic rendering that looked exactly like what we had seen, right down to the big nose and the huge eyes. Definitely one of the most interesting and creepiest experiences of my life. Unlike what's perceived in the West, we here in the East have a completely different opinion about fairies. Our legends also speak quite differently than what's portrayed in Hollywood movies. One such belief is that if a person sees a fairy, which is an extremely beautiful and pure making of God, the person is bound to have good luck. But if the fairy catches them watching her, the person is doomed or killed on the spot. I'm staying with my grandparents during Christmas right now. My grandfather is a businessman who deals with silk. 
This requires him to travel to the city quite often to make his sales, and quite often he gets late. Usually, nobody waits up for him as he has dinner before he returns home and he has a spare key. Last night, as usual, we went to sleep at around 10 p.m. Grandpa wasn't home yet. We didn't realize that he had forgotten his spare key. It was raining like crazy and apparently he came home at around 2 a.m. Everybody was asleep and he knocked, but as the rain was pounding, nobody heard his knocking. He waited for a while and lit a cigarette and just looked up at the sky when he saw something he'd never seen before. In the obviously dark sky, there seemed to be huge white figures with wings just soaring. There were around four or five of them, and there was some kind of smoke around them, but he could make out a human form with wings. This obviously freaked him out and he banged at the door harder. This woke me up. I realized it was him and I opened the door. He was wet and looked pretty weird. I was too sleepy to ask him anything about it, and I just went back to sleep. This morning, he told us this story, and he's hell-bent on the fact that it's fairies. He told us that his father had seen similar creatures, and that they were fairies, and he'd seen the same exact thing. He won't accept any other explanation, and he has a counter-explanation to everything we say, even though I think some of our suggestions make more sense. But what do I know? Maybe Grandpa's right, and it was the fairies. Our family has had paranormal experiences in the past, but this is the first of its kind. I know that I'm about to sound like a head case. I do have anxiety, depression, ADHD, and PTSD, but this isn't something that I can pin on any of those. I have two past experiences about the Fae, at least I think that's what it is, and I'm going to repeat them here to see if anybody knows what they might be. The first experience was a little man that I would see in my girlfriend's basement. Little trinkets would go missing and would be moved down there and we found a pair of eyes drawn into a spilled pile of glitter after we respectfully asked that if there was anybody living in the basement, they move along and leave our things alone. I moved from New Jersey to Georgia shortly afterward and briefly had things move around, but nothing went missing. I also thought that I may have seen him in my new room, but I can't be too sure. The second experience was that I would hear pacing outside my bedroom window my crystals were being knocked down and moved without explanation. I also hear something call my name from outside the window just before sunrise, but when I try to say to leave me alone, I am unable to speak. Now, this is the part that I actually need help with. Three things have gone completely missing since I started seeing this little man. I can't be sure if he's related to the things happening outside my window and my moving crystals, but I think it's a reasonable assumption. Three of my most treasured belongings have disappeared seemingly from the face of the earth. The first is a meteorite that I found on the ground during one of the worst days of my life. I carried it with me every day after that, and always felt at least marginally better when it was with me. Then I lost it and my mental health went completely to crap. This happened before I moved. My girlfriend and I searched her house over and over and we were never able to find it. I know the last time I had it was in her house, because the last time I remember having it I was horribly sick, and she handed it to me to help me calm down a little. I didn't leave her house for three days, and I couldn't find the meteorite the day after she handed it to me. The second is a flannel hoodie my sister gave me for Christmas. I wore it all last summer. It's very light material, and the sleeves roll up easily. I wore it while walking through the woods a lot. It had nice big pockets that I would use to carry my crystals around in. One day, it just vanished. I checked every room in the house and every vehicle my family owns. Gone. Finally, I have a black baseball hat that I embroidered myself with an anatomical heart. I've worn it almost every single day for nearly four years. I feel like I look naked without it and I'm always careful of where I put it. 
I cannot find it. The last time I wore it, it was last night. I rode with my mom to get food, and we used a drive through so I never left the car. We've torn apart both the house and the car and come up with nothing. All three of these items were special things that I had with me almost every day, that I was very careful to remember where I put them. All three have vanished without a trace. The strangest part is that my memory feels completely wiped when I try to think back to putting them down. I don't remember ever doing it. Am I just losing it? Are the Fae really taking my things, and if so, is there anything I can do to get them back? At least just the hat? Also, carbon monoxide isn't a possibility. We have a monitor thing with working batteries, and we've checked all that out. I just want my stuff back. Or at the very least, I really want to know what's going on. I grew up in an old, old house in the south, kind of in the middle of nowhere. The house was laid out somewhat circular, as you could walk from the living room through most of the other rooms just by walking in a complete circle and ending up back where you started. When I was around five, my younger sister and I were chasing each other in circles while my mom cooked dinner. I was in front of her and we were laughing and carrying on. When we got into the dining room, in the inside corner, there was a small greenish creature with a dark cloak on. It had pointy ears that stuck out and sharp teeth. I was young, but it was still very small, so I'd say maybe two feet tall. It looked kind of like it had been at the bottom of a pond or something, very old and tattered. It put its finger to its lips and was grinning. I slammed to a stop and my sister was chasing so close that she ran right into me, which pushed us both around the corner and into the kitchen. We both started screaming and my mom ran to us to see what was the matter, but the thing was gone. This has haunted me for years, I'm 25 now, and although I've done tons of searching, I've never really found anything that fits what we saw. For the longest time, I thought maybe I'd imagined it. And if it weren't for my sister also seeing it, or my mom remembering our very real terror, I probably would have just written it off. Any ideas as to what this could be? There were a lot of weird things that happened in that house when I was young. Disembodied voices, things moving, super weird dreams. But that was obviously the weirdest and most unsettling. Any feedback would really be appreciated. We still talk about it from time to time, and to this day, it always makes us feel kind of yucky. Also, just to clarify, this thing didn't look like a little man or a gnome or anything like that. It was more akin to a gremlin type with no hair that I could see and green skin. Anyway, let me know if you know what this is. Do I believe in fairies? If you had asked me just over a year or so ago, I would have laughed and said no. I am a recent believer in the Fae now, though. Fae more or less being a filler term for invisible trickster beings, at least for me. Less than a year ago, after talking about the possibility of some kind of interdimensional invisible beings with friends, a lot of weird things began to happen in my room. Keys went missing for hours on end, items were moved around, and I heard weird noises at night. I asked whatever was hanging out to leave me alone, and everything stopped. The start of this month, I was talking about it again with my friend. I joked about inviting whatever was screwing with me back because I was getting bored. Without telling anyone else, I formally did just that, and I even left a little offering of candy on my nightstand. The next day I came home to my locked room, took off my shoes, and found myself stepping in sand. There was sand all over my nightstand where I had left the candy, all over the floor, 
and all over the bed. For a few days after the sand incident, my lamp turned on by itself a few times, and I watched a bag move on its own. I couldn't tell you what they look like, or if they really are what we would traditionally call fairies, but something is there, and from my experience, they come around when you talk about them a lot. When I was a sophomore in high school, my mother had been diagnosed with a spinal tumor. They were able to remove it, granted she became confined to a wheelchair. For the year after that, she was in and out of different hospitals, doing rehab and trying to recover. I remember the first night I ever stayed the night with her by myself. My mom had been in a fairly stable condition, so my dad decided to let me stay. He took my sister to the mall, and while they were shopping, she saw a pocket fairy keychain from Zoomies that she just had to have. It had a bunch of signals on the packaging, and even a little story about how they captured the fairy in the woods and turned it into a keychain. She was instantly obsessed with it and was carrying it everywhere with her. Well, my dad ended up losing his wallet, and his battery was dead by the time they got to the parking lot, he chalked it up to a string of bad luck. That night, I was sleeping in my mom's room at the hospital. At around 3 a.m., she suddenly woke up coughing profusely and couldn't breathe. The doctors and nurses rushed in, and they had to give her an emergency tracheotomy. A tracheotomy, if you're not familiar, is when they have to put a tube down your trachea to help you breathe, or to essentially breathe for you. Definitely one of the scariest parts of my life. Now, when I told my dad about it, he said that that happened around the same time that he'd gotten up to use the restroom, and he swears that he heard some sort of demonic, distorted version of my sister's voice saying, Do you want to keep playing with me? When he stepped out, he saw the keychain in the hallway, even though he saw my sister go to sleep with it. He had no idea how it had gotten there, but once he saw it, he immediately ran to his truck, drove to the river by our neighborhood, and launched it out as soon as he could. Almost instantly, the nurses told me my mom was fine, my dad found his wallet, and everything went back to normal. Not sure what to make of this, but I thought I would share my story. I was very interested in astronomy and logic as a child. Right around five years old, my first tooth began to wobble. I did not believe in fairies at this time, yet I was very invested into stories and books about them. Many adults would have fun telling me that a tooth fairy would visit me soon, to which I assured them that that was nonsense. Well, one winter night, I was in Sydney, Australia, my brother and I slept in the same bed because we only had one room with the heater, and it wasn't the one we were in. I looked at the sky and I saw a golden light moving with a motion that was very large, kind of like a whale in water, almost as if it was wishing to go faster but was lagging. It was soft, elegant, and on a very specific, accurate path. The movement was very natural, like a slow hummingbird. The light moved mostly straight from left to right with the occasional twirl. As I looked longer, I saw a small human form and wings. It was hard to tell how far it was from me, but it didn't look as though it was more than 30 meters away. It also had this trail of sparkles following it. Yes, just like Tinkerbell. I called my mother to go see the fairy, to which she said, Dear, if I go look, the fairy will fly away, because I am an adult. It's obvious to me now that she was just playing along. To this day, she thinks it's a joke, and it's odd that if she merely went, she would have seen it, and possibly it would have altered her entire life. After I came back into the room, 
It was in the sky a little longer, but then it was out of sight. Maybe it was a fairy. Maybe it was an angel. My brother saw it too, as it turns out, and we've brought this up to each other a few times over the course of our lives. He remembered without me having to say anything else other than, remember the light? I still wish my mother had seen it, but to this day, it's one of the most interesting experiences I've ever had, tooth fairy or not. This story happened when I was about two or three years old. While my mother was pregnant with my half-brother, I was in a small but cute room. There was some wallpaper that had fish and stars with faces and stuff like that, and I would always stare at the cartoon moon because it intrigued me. For a few minutes, at most fifteen, I would stare at it, and I would understand somehow that I was safe if the moon was watching me and that evil, tricky creatures would never hurt me if the moon was watching. Now, for quite some time, I have had this abnormal feeling that I've met something magical. I always had this inside feeling that I could have been in a magical place or seen something magical, and I don't know why. But recently, I remembered what it was, and here is the story. One night, I'm staring at the cartoon moon, when I hear a knock at the window. I turn to see a small woman with wings. She was very pretty, and she was wearing pure gold clothes. Obviously, as a toddler, I couldn't do much, but this fairy, I guess, would begin to dance around and entertain me for a bit. Every night, she would come to the window and dance around and generally entertain me. You get the gist. Sometimes I remember her telling me stories, however, I can't remember which ones. But I still get the feeling that she did. Every time, somehow, she would give me a sense of Christmas cheer, even in the summer. I remember thinking about sugar plums and other Christmassy things, and then she would say goodnight and fly away. As I grew up, it became less frequent, and at some point she never came back. However, I would always remember the experience each time something about fairies or magic would come up. It's like a nostalgic feeling, and I never knew why that feeling occurred until today, when I remembered this specifically. I have personally had some experiences with nature spirits in my hometown in Europe and also overseas in Thailand and southern China. I had these experiences mostly in places that didn't have a lot of people, which makes me wonder if it's because these entities don't like crowded places or if it's just difficult to sense them when there are other living beings around with their energy and vibrations. Here in Europe, I'd often hear or feel something following me when I would go for walks in forests or rivers, either behind me or in the trees right next to me. When I first started noticing it, I thought it was birds or something, and sometimes it is, but other times it definitely isn't. I mean, there's no way a bird or any other critter is walking behind me and making that much noise. Once when I was in Thailand and walking around at night in an area with abandoned and wrecked houses and a small temple, it was clear that somebody was following me. It didn't sound exactly like a person. The steps were really light and a bit faster than ours. It just started out of nowhere. It was just trees and wrecked abandoned houses. My friend was with me and she knew the place and told me that it was completely normal since the area had some intense spiritual activity. She's kind of a medium. I'm quite familiar with the unseen too, but she has control over her ability and she's extremely sensitive to these things. At some point it just stopped, just as it had started. Suddenly, as if something just appeared somewhere behind us, followed us for a bit, and then disappeared. 
something similar happened when we were walking along a water channel during sunset. It was mostly forest all around, and there were lots of blooming trees. It was quite dark, and we couldn't really make out each other's facial traits anymore. At some point, it looked and felt as if other entities were walking around us. It was something magical. This last one may sound a bit less interesting, since it could be considered just a coincidence, but I'm including it anyway. There are legends about dragonflies, about how they can travel between worlds, and that red dragonflies are ancestors coming back from the afterlife to visit their living relatives. I have some Chinese ancestors pretty far in my family tree. When I was in China, there would be one red dragonfly flying around for just a few seconds every time I came out of work. To this day, I still like to think that it was one of my ancestors looking over me, as cheesy as that might sound. Anyway, those are my experiences with fey or nature spirits or whatever else you'd like to call them. This is my mom's story about me when I was just two years old. My mom was sleeping with me in her bed when I woke her up. I was laughing, pointing up at the ceiling, and smiling as I looked around our empty dark bedroom. I kept saying, look mommy, look, and laughing. Seeing nothing, my mom asks me what I'm pointing at. I tell her that there are beautiful fairies of many different bright colors flying around the room but here's where it gets creepy. I point to the dark hallway and say something like, the bad ones are in the hall. That's when my mom freaked out, ran to a light switch and turned on the light. I immediately stopped laughing and pointing around the room. I guess the light made them disappear. Keep in mind that I was only a toddler and I have no recollection of this, but it's one of the stories about me that my mom tells every once in a while and I think it still freaks her out. I saw a fairy portal once, and I almost went through it. I was nine years old, and it was the week before school. I was depressed about classes starting because kids had started to bully me. My mom took me on a day trip to the local preserve. When we arrived there, there was a bus load of elementary school kids and my heart sank. I was noticeably chubby and kids were always cruel about it. This was the 1980s and fat phobia was intense. So we walk along the main path full of kids. My mom could instantly charm children, so they loved her. But when she wasn't looking, the kids would say mean things to me. So I wandered off the main trail, and I found this Indian trail. It was very distinct in spite of a lot of undergrowth. It passed between two trees that arched toward one another, almost like a doorway. And then I came to this huge hedge. It was too high for me to see over, and it stretched all the way from the Indian Trail to the main path, seeming to cut across the forest. The Indian Trail led right up to it, and there was a fissure, just wide enough for a child to fit through. I peeked inside, and it was so lusciously green and cool, and this was a stifling hot day, Nebraska heat, humid and oppressive. It was unusual to find some place that cool in the forest, given all the heat and humidity. I squeezed into the fissure, set my foot on the earth on the other side, and it was soft and moist and springy, unlike the hard, baked, sandy earth of the main forest. What I saw remains the most beautiful place I have ever seen. The sky was pearl blue. There was a vivid green bank sloping down to a dry creek overgrown with ferns. A huge fallen tree trunk spanned the ancient creek like a bridge. On the other side was a forest of silvery trees, the most inviting thing I've ever seen. Peaceful, 
wondrous. All the sounds from outside were hushed. No gabbling children, no nothing, just peace. It filled me with joy, and at that time of my life, I had precious little that made me happy. Now, I had braced my hand on the outer wall of the hedge, and my other foot firmly planted in the hard, sandy, real part of the path, because somehow I knew that if I put both feet on the ferry side, I could never go back. It was so hard not to walk into it and start exploring. I truly felt the place call to me, and I have never wanted anything so badly than to cross that tree bridge and explore the silvery forest. Even the air felt different, moist and sweet, I felt a light, gentle mist touch my face as I closed my eyes and breathed in deeply. But then I thought of my mom. Could I really just leave her behind? She had had a sad life too, and I thought it would be a gift to show her this place and we could go in together. Well, as I had that thought, the fissure in the hedge began to close, pressing against my stomach and back. I was forced to choose go forward or go back. I pulled myself back out of it with an effort. The hedge branches caught my t-shirt and tore a hole. Branches scraped my arm, drawing blood. I went back down the Indian trail, past the two trees entwined like a doorway, and found my mother on the main path, still talking with those brats who'd had the nerve to bully me when she wasn't looking. I insisted that she come with me to see this most glorious thing, she didn't doubt me and was willing to follow me, only now it was really difficult to find the Indian trail in the undergrowth. It was all overgrown and covered in leaves, but I spotted it and I made it as far as the two trees that were like a door. Only now they were strung with nasty cobwebs, like the trees were suddenly so old and ugly I couldn't imagine going near them, and the trail had disappeared entirely. I looked up and pointed in the direction of the hedge, sure that she could spot it from there. It was nine feet high and stretched for several yards in both directions. But no, there was nothing, only the usual trees and undergrowth. I was so shocked when it wasn't there. I saw then that it was impossible that it had ever been there. It would have been bisected by the main path, which was packed with children and teachers. I was speechless trying to get my mother to understand what I had seen. She didn't doubt me, and she said, maybe it was just for you to see. I felt such a profound feeling of loss, like really inconsolable loss. Probably at the end of all my days, I will still think of that place. That was my chance to enter the fairy realm, but I turned back. I've never shared that story, I thought that if I ever had children, I would tell them about it, but that hasn't happened, so I thought I'd share it here. This happened back on the 27th of December in 2019. I live in the UK, but I'm primarily of Irish heritage on my father's side, and my family has been living in the locale for roughly four generations. There's a hill that I had to walk up after work to get to my home from the station. At the top, there are two Victorian lampposts. On the right, a couple of houses alongside the steep embankment, which is a dell with a tarmac understory, and to the left, woodlands, mostly oak and beech. Anyway, at the lamppost closest to me, I could see a figure struggling to climb it. At first, I thought it was a rat. I'm pretty short-sighted, and I wasn't wearing glasses. As I got farther and farther up the hill, it started to look more and more humanoid. I'm in shock at this point, and a bunch of correlations come into my head, and they all rest on fairy. I start laughing hysterically because of it due to the sheer absurdity, and I literally shouted something rude at the fairy because I was just in total disbelief. I guess I thought taunting it would prove it or disprove it, I don't know. But two seconds later, 
this clap bang explosion goes off at the back of my head and knocks me to the ground. I just start running to get out of there. I had no bumps or injuries on the back of my head and the sheer force of it is just unexplainable. I honestly would have shrugged off the entire experience if it hadn't been for that. Moral of the story, I suppose, is don't be mean to fairies. I'm still not entirely sure what I saw. I'm from Virginia, and I currently live on the border of Virginia and West Virginia. My entire life I have experienced the paranormal. From dealing with ghosts and shadow people at a security job, to dealing with an inhuman being at a retail job, I have seen it all. But lately, I am experiencing something new. Being from the mountains, I have been aware of Haines and Bogans and, of course, the Fey Folk. Thankfully, I've never had to deal with the latter, until now. As of late, I have started hearing small sing-song voices crying out, seen flashes of silver, and have noticed small knickknacks and collectibles disappearing and reappearing. I keep a broom at the front and back door, I circle my house with salt, and I use oil on every door frame, and I have a cross or a religious symbol in every room. I have a Judeo-Christian upbringing. Of interest, we literally live right next to a giant sinkhole that my neighbor has heard growling from before. I'm not really looking for advice for getting rid of anything or helping deal with it, since it's not really an issue and we don't necessarily feel threatened. I just thought it might be fun to share my experiences and see if anybody else also has experience with the Fae. I'm an 18-year-old guy. I started having sightings, which I strongly believe are due to the Fae, and then I started researching. I recently learned about them and read stories, and I've seen many things that seem to add up to them. I don't know if they are attracted to me, or if I can somehow see through the thing they hide behind for a while. The way this works is that usually I see them for a couple of seconds, and then they're gone. I don't suffer from any kind of mental condition, and I've never hallucinated. The creatures are not something that I could make up. I'm not that creative. There are some creatures that I've seen many times. I live in an area that is surrounded by forest, and on an autumn day, I was hiking in the woods behind my backyard. On a hill, I saw a little creature wearing a dark cloak with collars that seemed to be made of fallen leaves and its head seemed like the skull of a bird. I don't think it showed itself intentionally because it started running and then it was gone. The reason this memory freaks me out is that it was a windless day. And for the few seconds that I saw this, the leaves were moving as it ran away. I saw this creature a second time. At least I think it was the same thing. Out of curiosity, I hiked there again the next day. But this time, it was really huge, and I felt like it was warning me about its territory or something. So I turned back and I went home, and I avoided the area if possible. My second one, which is pretty common, is to see these little people who seem to be like a mix between a human and some kind of rodent. They always walk into my house. They never seem hostile, maybe a little grumpy. I believe that they might be brownies or some other type of house spirit. These are the ones that I would like to talk about and learn more about because I see them so often. I don't know. What do you guys think about it? I'm still not entirely sure what I'm witnessing.
One evening, a group of friends and I were hanging out in the city. First, we went to a local restaurant, and then we went to a liquor store to pick up some drinks. As we each threw out suggestions on where to hang out, one of my friends mentioned Stowe Lake, a small lake in San Francisco. As we get a couple of swigs of liquor in us, we start walking down a trail at about 11.45 p.m. First, we stopped at a creepy gazebo in the middle of the forest and then began heading toward the lake. I began to power walk and try to scare my friends down the path. I see a huge tree up ahead. As I was turning right behind the tree, I notice a small figure start to waddle away from me. I noticed a dark blue pointy hat and a red coat on him. That sucker started running and panting into a hole in the tree. Sort of looked like a doorway. I didn't think twice to stick around and I tried to play it cool as if nothing happened and returned to my group. I never mentioned it to anyone, but can confirm, I think there are gnomes in San Francisco. This happened when I was 13 or 14. This was probably one of the last times that I went consistently to see my aunt. She lived very close to a mountain near Oaxaca. Her husband, my uncle, was a pretty wealthy guy. He sold and bred livestock. He had a lot of horses, cattle, goats, and dogs. Their house was a pretty big place with lots of land for the animals. Of course, their house was very isolated. The closest town was quite a ways away. We went there one year to stay with her and everything was normal for the first few days. When the weird things started happening, it was early in the morning. I wear wristwatches and I always take mine off to go to bed and put it back on after I brush my teeth and whatnot. I remember waking up grabbing my watch and putting it on the top shelf of this shelf outside the bathroom, brushing my teeth and coming back to find it gone. I thought for a second and I looked around the shelf and under it, but I couldn't find it. I went back to the room I was staying in and looked around there and it wasn't there either. I thought maybe one of my siblings was playing with me and I looked around, but all three of my siblings were fast asleep on the floor. That's when I started getting, not scared, but worried. I go to look around the shelf once more and I still can't find it. I remember saying out loud, whoever took my watch, give it back because I'm getting mad. I walk away to put my shoes on and from the living room, I could hear a slight noise. It was my alarm on my watch going off. I peek my head into the hallway and I could see the blue light from my watch. That's when I got scared. I walked up to it and put it on and got a really uneasy feeling. I go to watch TV and I see my aunt walking into the kitchen. I say good morning and I ask her if she grabbed my watch. She says no, but not to leave valuables in the open. I asked her why and she says, the duendes will take them and hide them I gave an uncomfortable laugh and said, right. She obviously saw that I thought she was crazy. She told me she was serious and that the Duende probably grabbed my watch. In my mind, I'm thinking this lady is nuts. Later on that day, I asked my mom if Duendes were real. She gave me a concerned look and asked me why. I told her that my aunt said that there were Duendes in the house. She steered away from the question and just said, if you feel scared, just start to pray. I didn't think about it much after that. I remember that we watched a movie in the living room and I fell asleep on the couch. I woke up to a thud coming from the kitchen and footsteps running from the kitchen. The footsteps were light, but still audible, kind of like when a cat runs. I see lights turn on from the hallway and I see my aunt running toward the kitchen. I hear her say, Mendingos duendes. 
which means roughly damn elves. I slowly get up and peek into the kitchen and it's a huge mess. A lot of stuff knocked over, most of it food. I asked if an animal got in, maybe a raccoon. She's so irritated by the mess, she just says, the wind days. I roll my eyes and look at my watch. It was almost 4 a.m. I decided to help her clean up. We finished cleaning up in about 20 minutes, and that's when I helped her with the dustpan. It was one of the sucky ones where you have to crouch over and hold it. When I crouch over, I look to the huge pile of food and I can see either sugar or flour. And that's when I made out little tiny footprints. Not like baby footprints, but smaller, like if a lizard had human feet. I look to my aunt and she says, I know, I saw them, I told you. I'm still not completely convinced, so I go to bed and I wake up and nothing happens for a few days. The last experience I had with these things was when I was sleeping and woke up for some reason, or rather no reason at all. I remember feeling uneasy, trying to figure out why I was awake. I could hear those footsteps again as something small was running in front of the bed. I sit up fast and I see a small shadow running weird, like it was kind of waddling but still moving really fast. All this happened in a matter of seconds. I turn on the lights and nothing is there. I couldn't make the shadow out, but it was small, maybe a foot tall. That's when I started believing in them. I was so uneasy after that, and I was glad I was getting out of there. I may have been a skeptic going into it, but after that visit, I'm a believer in Duendes. For reference, I live in Sweden, and my family is very anti-religious. The house we live in is fairly old, dating back around a hundred years. My dad is a very productive person, always getting new hobbies on the fly. One day, he decided to start a bee farm in our backyard. When you take care of bees, you need room that is very clean too to keep out the bacteria from the honey. He decided to use our shed in the backyard, which is extremely small. The room can only fit about two people. In the room, we have one desk, which has a couple of drawers in it. In those drawers, we keep all of the necessary equipment when making the jars of honey. My dad had to put labels on each jar of honey, which is a very tedious process. The labels are on a huge scroll, about the size of an average adult's small arm in diameter. My dad and I were putting labels on the jars for about 30 minutes before he goes outside for about 10 seconds to get some air. I can see him the entire time. When he goes out, he puts the scroll on the top of the desk. During this time, I was watching and I took out my phone. When he comes back in, we proceed to start again, but out of nowhere, he asks me where I put the scroll. I told him that he put the scroll on the top of the desk, but it's not there. Without the scroll of labels, we couldn't continue working. We start looking all over the room, but nothing. As I described earlier, the room was tiny, which is why it's so odd for something to disappear. We searched everywhere, behind the desk, in each drawer, outside, but still nothing. This happened about a year ago, and it's still freaking me out. Usually when my family and I experience something paranormal, we just blame it on something logical and ignore it. But this incident cannot be explained. There is seriously nowhere for that thing to have disappeared to, and that's why it's freaking me out. Even in the unlikely event of it rolling outside, my dad and I would have easily spotted it or just heard it. Moral of the story is gnomes might still exist in Sweden.
It was Christmas Eve, 2019. I had gotten into a drunken argument and I had to spend 24 hours, Christmas Day, in an empty, silent cell. I was hungover at the time and had been beaten by police for exercising in my cell. Well, after staring at the blank walls for so long, in my state of utter misery, I saw fairies. I don't believe in fairies or anything else paranormal and yet there they were, flying around my cell. Little female figures with dragonfly wings. They never spoke, as far as I can remember. They just flew around the room and I played with them. They were semi-transparent, colorfully dressed, and I could not touch them. They were about the length of a hand, around 10 inches roughly. They had come to keep me company and keep me sane, I decided. I saw them only for a minute or so, and then they were gone. After this, I decided that they had merely been figments of a traumatized and understimulated mind, as jail cells are designed to be unpleasant, and the mind can create things in those lonely situations. I never saw them again, until this morning, exactly two years later. I awoke this Christmas morning to the exact same fairies flying around my room. I saw one clearly. She smiled and flew around me, and I remembered her like an old friend. My mother entered my room and in a haze, I told her that the fairies had come to visit again. She assumed that I was dreaming, but I was very much awake. Where I live in Southwest England, fairies are something that many people believe in and have done for centuries. After the first event, I recently visited a nearby haunted jail and I learned that one old woman escaped her cell with no plausible explanation. For the rest of her days, she swore up and down that the fairies had helped her. But to me, they are nothing more than fiction, something I never even think about. I suppose it could be some sort of trauma, as every Christmas Eve since then, I've had nightmares of running from the police like I did that night. I like to consider more rational explanations, but then, I'm starting to think that I do believe in fairies, and I hope they will visit me again, maybe next Christmas. When I was around four years old, I went to my grandparents' house for my very first solo sleepover. I remember playing in their guest room and always having my attention drawn to a specific corner of the room. Anyway, that evening I went to bed soundly. I woke up right around dawn and I can remember as clear as day seeing a small humanoid figure walking across the windowsill of the window facing east. I remember the dawn light creating a sort of silhouetted image of this thing, but I could tell that it was wearing clothing. And from the waist down, it had a sort of transparent look to it. As it neared the end of the windowsill, I can remember it noticing me watching it, and it quickly hopped off the sill into the dark corner of the room that had always seemed to draw my attention. A few years ago, I was visiting my mom and I brought it up. She said that she vividly remembers picking me up that morning and I was scared out of my wits to the point where I would refuse to ever enter the same room again to gather my toys. I've run this encounter through my head more times than I can count, trying my best to dismiss it as a childhood dream. But 30 years later, that memory sticks out in my mind as clear as day. I'm pretty sure I saw some kind of fey creature. I just don't know what. I was studying abroad in the UK a little over a year ago. It was spring break and I traveled to Scotland with one of my buddies from school. We spent some time in Edinburgh and took a ghost tour because why not? The city is ancient and awesome. 
I'm mad at myself for not having the setting on my phone's camera that records a few seconds before each picture turned on, because I would have caught a wisp of white, like a thin silk handkerchief being tugged out of frame the second before the picture was taken. That was at the tomb of Mackenzie in Greyfriars Cemetery. After Edinburgh, we went up to North Inverness. We explored the town a bit, but my eyes and mind were drawn to an odd-looking hill a little ways outside the downtown area. It seemed so out of place, just plopped into the middle of a neighborhood in the city, far away from any of the surrounding mountains. My friend looked it up and discovered that it's called Tom Nehurich Cemetery Hill. Tom Nehurich means Hill of Yew Trees or Hill of Fairies. The base of the hill is surrounded by a large cemetery, with some gravestones that are really old. We made our way to the top of the hill and began meandering through the gravestones up there. Some were really interestingly designed, but we noticed that the earliest ones at the top of the hill were much younger than the ones at the bottom. My friend is a camera nut and wasn't walking as fast as me, so he fell behind taking pictures of some crows that were cawing loudly in the surrounding trees. I was just walking slowly along the path when I heard a woman whisper my name in my left ear. The day was slightly rainy and no one was in the cemetery besides my friend and I. At first I thought he was trying to be funny, but when I turned around, he was over a hundred feet behind me, and obviously he doesn't sound like a woman. I didn't say anything right away, as I was kind of in disbelief and awe, and an eerie feeling of being watched slowly came over me. On our way down the hill, the feeling of being watched faded, and I mentioned what I heard to my friend. He is extremely skeptical. When we were at Mackenzie's tomb, the tour guide brought us to another, smaller crypt around the corner and told us that people get attacked in it. My friend went in and stood in the middle, defiantly. He just doesn't believe. But after I told him about the whisper, he mentioned that he had thought he heard what sounded like footsteps on the fallen leaves behind him for most of the time we were up there, but didn't want to say anything. Right then, a bunch of crows started to caw loudly at the top of the hill above us and all took flight, as though something had startled them. We got out of there right quick and made our way to the pub. A few days after what I have called my fairy incident, I was back in my student apartment in England. Now, I had never experienced sleep paralysis before. There was an incident where it felt like my whole body was asleep like when your hand or foot falls asleep, but I could still move. It was just uncomfortable. So I don't really know if this was sleep paralysis, but I was rationalizing why I shouldn't move. I didn't want it to be surprised and hurt me, but let me back up a bit. I awoke. I knew my eyes were closed, but I could see the room perfectly, and I knew that it was the middle of the night. But somehow, there was a silhouette of a figure in the window at the foot of my bed, illuminated from behind by a bright light. I realized that I was awkwardly twisted, like my legs and pelvis were down on the bed, but my head and shoulders were up toward the ceiling and my hands were resting overlapped on my hip. The figure didn't give off any feeling to me. I was completely indifferent about it, just watching it. It stepped around the right side of my bed, which is a wall, the only part of our room out of place, and sat down next to me. Even without the light behind it, it was still a silhouette, not really a shadow, it had depth. It placed one hand on my overlapped hands and put the other on the right side of my head, then leaned in really close to my left ear. At that moment, my brain was like, this is not normal. This shouldn't be happening. Make it go away. But I didn't want to move and have it hurt me. So I started to breathe in and out loudly and quickly through my teeth, and the figure rapidly backed up, got up, and continued backing away. That's when I opened my eyes, and I was startled at how close my face was to the wall. I was still in the same twisted position. After writing myself, I turned on all the lights and didn't sleep for two nights. 
After the fact, I realized that I can't remember feeling it touch my hands, but I just knew that I couldn't move them or it would get startled and might hurt me. A couple of months after that scary night, I was back home in the USA. Once again, it was the middle of the night and I woke up, but this time I couldn't move. More like how I've heard sleep paralysis described. There was a dark figure standing over me. The best way I can describe it is like a ring wraith from Lord of the Rings, but without the armor. Like a stereotypical ghost, a black bedsheet draped over a person. After a few moments of, oh gosh, there's someone in my room standing above me, my left arm suddenly, like automatically, shot up and flipped on the lamp above my head. This wasn't a conscious movement. It was as though my arm was acting on its own. The figure vanished as soon as the light turned on. I haven't had any noticeable paranormal experiences since that figure, which part of me attributes as something to do with the fairy that followed me from Scotland to England. I don't feel and never have felt in danger from the Fae, other than when the fairy was right up against my ear. I don't really know what to make of it, if I'm marked or what have you. Just some interesting things that happened to me that I believe are different than ghosts.